Welcome back to Andy Cooks, the show where me, Andy, professional chef, tries to give you some tips on how to cook better at home. An interesting one, a chef that I follow on TikTok a lot, Chef Authorised, he um, made a great TikTok about how professional chefs don't actually make great cooks. And until COVID, I didn't believe that was true. And then found myself at home a lot, cooking a lot, and I quickly realized I wasn't a great home cook. So the last kind of couple of years, I've really honed my home cooking techniques. And I think I've got some great things to share. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And if you're getting any value from this video at all, please chuck it a like, because it helps me out a lot. Anyway, into today's video, we are talking about my viral TikToks and going through some of the finer detail on them. So today we're talking about my roast beef TikTok. Uh, I feel like a Sunday roast. Which has 25 million views, almost 25 million views, I think. Um, which is an astonishing amount. And I think a lot of the reason it's got so many views is because a lot of people, uh, English people especially, have great opinions on this dish. Uh, everyone kind of grew up eating this dish in England for a long time. And everyone has their own version of what they think is the best Sunday roast. So it's kind of, people have big opinions on this one. I lived in England for seven years and, and I cooked a lot of this dish. Um, you know, it's very common pubs, cashier pubs and even restaurants that, uh, you know, it's a big tradition for Sunday roasts. Everyone comes out, eats together as family and friends and it's usually over a roast. So the most iconic roast I think is the roast beef um, and for good reason, it's delicious. So like I was saying, everyone has different opinions about what makes a good Sunday roast. So uh, I want to go over the three key factors that I think uh, are, mo are the most important in the Sunday roast. And then from there, I'll leave you to choose the rest of your garnishes. Because uh, I don't want to get in trouble again with the English community and, and miss something out. So my, in my opinion, the three most critical part of a Sunday roast is the meat. Uh, and I think roast beef is the quintessential Sunday roast beef. Um, the roast potatoes and the gravy. From there, I'll let you go and choose what other side you want. Uh, obviously, the Yorkshire pudding's a pretty, you know, is a pretty close one to the potatoes, I think. Um, so Yorkshire puddings are, are a kind of a must for a lot of people. Cauliflower cheese is also a pretty big must. Honey glazed carrots, uh, watercress, uh, horseradish cream. There's, there's bread sauce, there's so many different ways you can take this. Um, and you know, how I eat roasts now to how I eat roasts when I was living in England is quite different because uh, the climate's different. So let's talk about these three things today. And then um, if, there's, if you've got a request for any of those garnishes that I just talked about or any other garnishes, then let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to try and make a video about those at some point too. Let's start with the most important, beef. So there's three kind of classic, I guess you could call, cuts of beef that you use for roasts. So the top side, which is the leanest piece and probably the most economical. The sirloin, like a piece of sirloin like this, um, makes a great roast. Uh, and that's what I did in my TikTok video. And then what we're gonna do today is the ribeye, so the rib roast. So these are all Cool Koi Blue Diamond products. Uh, they're grain finished, excellent, excellent cut of meat if you're in Australia. If you ever see this blue diamond and you're in Australia, you know you're gonna get some great quality. So like I was saying, we're gonna go with this guy today. We did the sirloin last time. And then the age old debate of should you bring it up to room temp or not? My opinion on steaks at room temperature, um, right or, is that there is kind of no right or wrong. I think if you're doing a steak, like a 300 gram sirloin or 300 gram ribeye, I honestly don't see that there's much difference in a room temp steak from a fridge cold steak uh, in cooking. Uh, a guy called Max the Meat Guy on TikTok, he did a video about it, um, comparing the two. Uh, when you start dealing with larger joints like this, I think there is some merit in doing it. Uh, it's just gonna, it's gonna speed up the time in the oven uh, and it's just not gonna kind of tense up just quite as much. So uh, but at the same time, if you forget to do it, it's really no big deal. So your lunch isn't ruined. So if you remember, take your piece of meat out an hour before you cook it, uh, and you'll probably get a slightly better end result. But at the end of the day, I don't think you're gonna find a huge difference. So let's get started with the beef. All right, so starting with your beef, you're just gonna take it out of the packet and pat it dry. You don't want any of that moisture that's in the bag along with it. Once you've patted it dry, you're gonna put a bit of a neutral flavored high temperature oil. So I've got some grapeseed oil here, works really well. Avocado oil works quite well. Peanut, if no one's got any allergies. Uh, and you're not, you know, you're not really covering it. You just wanna, uh, you just want something for the, the salt to come onto, the salt to adhere to, I should say. So 
Once you've got your oil all over it, you're gonna start seasoning it. Now, get a good quality rock salt, and you're gonna be pretty generous with this. It's a pretty big piece of meat, so make sure you're covering it around. You can also do what you call dry brine this, where you did this the day before and leave it in your fridge overnight. Um, and you will find that the seasoning will penetrate it a bit better. Um, but with, with that, just like the room temperature thing, it's not a disaster if you don't do it. You know, it's not you know, wrong if you don't do it. Now, I often always get asked, should you put, why don't I put pepper when I'm cooking steaks and cooking meat? I, I'm not anti-pepper, I really like it, but personal preferences though, that you don't put pepper when you're sealing stuff. Uh, I find the pepper burns. Uh, whereas the salt doesn't. So I prefer, if I am wanting pepper on my steak, I put it on after rather than during the cooking process. Let's get this thing cooking. So we're going into a cast iron pan, nice heavy cast iron pan on a medium high heat. Uh, I kind of like to put a little bit more oil in the bottom as well, just so it's not going into a dry hot pan and get that kind of pretty, pretty hot. I'm aware I'm cooking in a commercial kitchen, uh, so some domestic cookers can go pretty hot, some can't. You just gotta kind of work with what you can. So things might happen a little bit faster in here. All right, now that pan's nice and hot. This piece doesn't have a particularly large fat cap on it, but you will put the fat cap side down first. All right, so now that's got good color on all sides. We'll take it out. I'm gonna add our veg. And with the veg, this is the base for our gravy. And it also lifts the meat off the bottom of the pan. So you don't really need to saute that too much. Once it's in there, evenly spaced out, put the meat on top of it. And the whole thing goes in the oven. All right, so that's at 180 degrees uh, uh, on a fan-forced oven. You go 190 in a non-fan-forced oven, and we're gonna start it off for about 40 minutes. At the end of the day, it's all about temperature. So we're gonna check the core temperature uh, after about 40 minutes. Uh, we're after a core temperature of about 55 degrees to pull it out and rest it, and that's gonna give us a nice medium roast beef, which I think is a good temperature when you're serving a lot of people. Some people will like it a bit more rare, some people will like it a bit more well done. So. We'll check it out to 40 minutes and see where we're at. So roast potatoes. Uh, so these are what we call a blue royal potato here in Australia. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can get them in England as well. But you, what you're after is a potato that says it's good for roasting. So you want a nice floury potato. So we're gonna peel these, boil them in some uh, salted water. They always start from cold water as well. So general rule of thumb, if it grows under the ground, you start from cold water. If it grows above the ground, you start from boiling water. going to cut these in half so they're about that size. Let's get them cooking. Decent amount of salt. So once potatoes are boiled we're going to drain them and get them nice and dry and then we're going to roast them and I'm going to roast them in beef tallow. So this is Carrara Wagyu beef tallow. Now you can get tallow in most supermarkets and butcher shops now. Uh, and I think it works really, really well for this. Even better than the traditional duck fat that most people will roast their potatoes in. So you get a fair amount of this in here. We're gonna heat this up and then get our potatoes in here and then turn them once and then get them in the oven to roast. So these have been cooking for about 25 minutes and you can see that they are fully cooked. You can put a knife through them but you don't want them so cooked that when you do that part, they fall apart. Anyway, you're gonna drain them, and then you just wanna steam them. When I say steam them, I mean just leave them, if you can just leave them in your sink like this, make sure there's no water on the bottom of the colander. Just leave them like that, and all that's gonna do is that steam is gonna dry the outsides out. And then we're gonna rough them up, and then we're gonna roast them. Let's check the temperature. All right, so that's actually hotter than I would have liked it. That's at about 60 degrees in the core temperature. So we're gonna pull this out. Truck it on this tray to rest it. And hope I haven't completely butchered it. <laughs> so while that's resting, the 
perfect time to get your roast potatoes on and back in the oven. So we'll get that Wagyu fat heating up. You want it pretty, pretty hot. You can see I've fluffed these up. So they're all little crinkly bits on the end. Be careful doing this, that oil's really hot. Might be better to use tongs if you're not feeling confident. I'm gonna give these a little season, shake them around a bit, and then get them in the oven. So 180 degree oven again. And after 10 minutes, we're gonna flip them. So onto the gravy. So this is our pan with our roasting veg in it. You can mush the stuff up, um, extract a bit more flavor, but I find it kind of gets pretty cloudy then the stock. So we'll just put some heat on that. And we're gonna chuck in two heat tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And we're gonna cook that out a bit. And what that's doing is soaking up all the fat that's come off that meat and basically making a roux. Then you're gonna add about a cup of red wine. You can use stout for this as well, works really well. And we're gonna add about 700 mils of, of beef stock. And then we'll pass it, to get any lumps out and all the bits out of it. And then we'll adjust it for seasoning. Halfway, we'll give these a little turn. Back in the oven. So we're just gonna pass this gravy. So you don't want a super fine sieve. Beautiful. Give it a taste. Yeah. It's pretty good. All right, so we've got our roast potatoes. Time to carve some beef. So the trick when you're carving beef is to try and carve it relatively thin, especially with the leaner cuts. Lots of gravy, gotta have lots of gravy. So there you have it, roast beef, crispy, Wagyu fat potatoes. Bon appetit. The potatoes are banging. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. I definitely overcooked it. Well, I overcooked it for how I said I was gonna cook it in the style of the video. And when I saw the temperature in the oven, I was gonna stop and start the whole video again. And then I thought, why? Why bother? These things happen, they happen in real life. Uh, why not talk about it on camera? So at the start, I wanted this to get to 55 degrees before I was gonna pull it out. Uh, and I'd actually checked it off camera a couple minutes before I started filming that last shot when I realized it was overcooked. And it was at like 47, 48 degrees. So it shot up really quickly. And that's my fault. I should have checked it earlier, but I didn't. It's not ruined, it's still perfectly edible, um, but it's certainly kind of medium, medium well. And then I thought, well, I might as well just leave it in the video because it's real life. Sometimes these things happen. It's not the end of the world. And to be perfectly honest, that's still pink. It's not dry, it's tasty. There's nothing wrong with it. It's one of those key things in cooking. It was like, just have a crack. You're gonna make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time, all right? I'm by no means the best chef in the world, but you know, I have a crack and I like to try lots of different things. And even the stuff that I've cooked hundreds of times, every now and then I stuff up. Anyway, legends, thanks for watching. Chuck us a like if you got anything from this video. Uh, I hope you did even if it was just uh, a giggle at me uh, making a mistake. We'll see you next Sunday for a special episode where I head down to Melbourne to one of my old workplaces and see if I can still hack on the pass. See you then, peace.